All right, let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. All right, he's back. In the bullpen, we have Brad Palumbo, YouTuber and co-founder of Based Politics. He is a policy journalist, also correspondent at the Foundation for Economic Education. His work has been cited by lawmakers like Senator Ron Paul. We choose to not hold that against him here. All right, good day, sir. Welcome. Thanks for having me. We're going to chop it up about an interesting dynamic. It's called protest in the United States of America. And there are some who believe that protest has to be of a particular style and brand in order for it to be appropriate. I don't want to presume what you know, believe about how protest should be properly done in this country. So if you would give us your opinion, I would then opine. Yeah, so Dr. Ritchie, look, I'm a big supporter of the First Amendment, the right to protest, all that. But everybody agrees that you can't infringe on other people's rights in the process. And what we're witnessing right now across the country is ceasefire protesters upset about what's going on in Israel, pulling stunts like blocking traffic to try to, to, try to raise awareness for their cause. And I think that is disgraceful tactic to use. They are trapping ambulances that need to get to hospitals. They're victimizing innocent people who can't get to work where they need to go to jobs to feed their families. They have every right to make their voice Voices heard about this issue, but the way they're doing it is, I think, most likely illegal. And regardless, I think is deeply unethical and also counterproductive for their own cause. The purpose of protest is to make people uncomfortable, um, to create a significant um, inconvenience in their life. Emphasis is the reality of protest. You are emphasizing a point. So let me give you some pushback because I think the emphasis of style uh, somehow becomes equivocal to the matter of protest. Give an example. They're not protesting Israel per se, they're protesting the Israeli government committing genocide. That's a big deal. Uh, the mass murder of individuals who are basically are children in Gaza. You have an average age of 19.2 and 40% of the population there is under 14 years of age. That is a human rights dynamic. If you go to protests that took place in the 60s in America, um, traffic was stopped because of protest, police brutality. If you go to what happened when white protesters decided to you know, try to overthrow the government. You know, they stopped traffic too. They didn't have a permit to do their march that the president told them to go and do. It stopped traffic. Nobody complained about it. They then committed criminal trespass and literally tried to find Mike Pence to hang him. So we can talk about this in the context of what's important. And remember the summer of violence, as white conservatives typically call Black Lives Matter protests across the nation. Well, the figures are in. 93% of those protests had absolutely no semblance of violence. And traffic was stopped at less than 1% of the time, more than five to 10 minutes. These things are already allocated. You can check me out anytime at report time. So I think you have a relevant argument in the, in the sense of convenience versus inconvenience. But it's not a protest, dear brother, if somebody doesn't feel inconvenienced in the protest. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah, so I have to disagree with a couple things there. One, on the Black Lives Matter protests, there were tons of peaceful protests, but there were also mass riots and looting. And actually, more than two dozen people died during riots associated with the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. And what you actually saw was support for the cause go down in the polls as those protests got out of hand. And that's where I have to push back on you. The point of a protest well, I'm for going a to, cause- I'm going to give you the figures and then I'm going to tell you to give me yours. So I got my figures from the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, ACLED. That's where my numbers are cited from. And then I will give you the opportunity to cite where your numbers are from. 
Right. So I'm not disputing that 90 plus percent were peaceful. What I'm telling you is that in the 10 percent or 7 percent or whatever of those protests Mm -hmm. that weren't peaceful, more than 20 people died. Just Google how many people died in the BLM riots. Sources like The Guardian will come up, right? Liberal leaning sources. And I'm just telling you that that form of protest is counterproductive. And the point of protest is to convince people. Exactly. Blocking traffic mm-hmm. doesn't convince people, it pisses them off. It makes them, mm-hmm. I agree with you that what's happening in Israel and Gaza right now is of the utmost importance. It's a okay. deep concern. So that's exactly why you should want to get people on side, not make them Got hate it. you. And all I can tell you is that everyday people who need to get to their jobs, when they see purple haired protesters blocking the street, they don't Mm. think, hmm, I should learn more about their cause. They think, who are these stupid people? Why are they stopping me from getting to work to feed my kid? Mm. And why would I ever listen to them and take anything they have to say seriously? Mm. They, They thought like that before the protest, though. They might not. A lot of Americans don't have their minds made up on this. So, so you think because. A person may have been inconvenienced with a traffic jam, which by the way happens routinely, especially in cities like Atlanta where I live. You think that inconvenience because individuals are standing up for life, for humanity, that is going to cause them to say, "Oh, that did it, I no longer support people. I think that people, everyday people don't pay attention to global geopolitics happening halfway across the world that much. And then when their first exposure to it is protesters blocking Mm. ambulances in the street and preventing them to get from their jobs. Yeah, I think that's going to make them a lot less likely to listen to that cause. So if you really care about getting that message out, you would go about your protests in a way that's constructive, not Mm. destructive. Would you consider the protest of the 60s where young black people decided to sit in opposition to law in restaurants where statutorily it was illegal to do so. And it created significant permeation of violence perpetrated by way of the police and also citizens, white citizens who did not want black people sitting in those restaurants. They knew that this violence would occur. They knew these individuals would likely try to harm them physically and many of them did and they too were blamed for not being constructive, for only pissing off white people. Do you not see the pattern here, dear sir? So the same individuals who decided to engage in protests in the 60s to make people uncomfortable in order to highlight the reality of the insanity of their policies, well, you still have people today doing the exact same. And the individuals who oppose them are saying what you're saying. That yeah, let me tell you why I think it's different. Inconvenienced. And it's pissing people off. It's different for one key reason. When they were doing sit ins at segregated diners, they were doing the protest at the institution that was committing the harm. Blocking bridges in Brooklyn is not going to convince you, right? You're protesting segregation by going to a segregated restaurant and sitting down in it and protesting. You're actually targeting the root of the injustice. Mm Bibi Netanyahu does not care if you block a bridge in Brooklyn, right? He is not paying it to the Israel. If you're mad about what the Israeli government is doing. Sir, they're not trying to convince Netanyahu. They're trying to convince the American government. But let me correct you on a point because I actually do teach a class on Dr. King and the protest movement. They utilize those restaurants as a proxy for everything from voting rights um, to being able to have officials represent them in their communities by way of the district line. So these protests were utilized for for a multifaceted approach, not just one approach. But segregation uh, and the evils of bigotry and racism codified in that, of course it was. But let me read to you the numbers so that you can understand the exact data. The data of Black Lives Matter protests, more than 93% were peaceful, there was no according of violence. The armed conflict location event project analyzed more than 7,750 Black Lives Matter demonstrations in all 50 states in the United States of America and included Washington, D.C. This took place after George Floyd's murder. Their reports state that out of those thousands and thousands of active protests, Fewer than 220 reported violent demonstrations. Fewer than 220. Hold on. What does that mean? Well, well, I'm glad you asked me the question. Fewer than 220 had any report of a violent demonstration. Here's what that means. 
That means that the narrative from Republicans that said it was a summer of violence from black people inside of the Black Lives Matter movement is a lie. The Actually, a lot of the lie. radicals doing it were white people. Not <laughs> a lot of them were. Uh, but so, Dr. Ritchie, to the at least, I'm reading you a headline from the Guardian right now. At least 25 Americans were killed during protests amid political unrest in 2020. Do you think it means a lot to their families they, of those they, dead they, people who were killed in the riots? That oh, well, 93 percent were peaceful. It was right, only 200 riots. Understand what you're saying here. I don't equivocate. Death, death is bad at any turn. Death was bad during the January 6th terrorist attack, where we had people that died because of that attack on American soil. But the reality is this, dear brother, when we talk about protest, I don't know if the issue for you is what they're protesting. Um, we started the conversation about stopping traffic. The deaths that you are talking about, obviously unfortunate and sad. But is it, did they die because of traffic being stopped? No, no, you were bringing up the BLM incidences in 2020 and 25 because people BLM died in those was riots. Summarily yes. Blamed, yes, because they were summarily blamed for stopping traffic and creating all of these issues adverse to uh, commerce and traveling, et cetera. Let me ask you this question. The Boston Tea Party, uh, was that a party? <laughs> no, it was not. It was what? It, it was a protest, a riot. It was a violent they just, protest. Right. It was a violent protest, a violent protest that was done by white people. And these white people committed this violent protest that disrupted the commerce of that region, that stopped these trade port ships, that totally dismantled their economic reality in that local region for a period of time. And we say today, it was a Boston Tea Party. My point to you is that narrative connects to white folk in a way it does not benefit black people. I mean, Imagine most of the ceasefire protests, people. that's tons of white people are leading wait, wait, that. Wait it's not about white or not, black. No, no, let me, let me, is of let the me make the point. Well, let me make the point. If black people would have engaged in um, a violent um, mob going on port ships, taking away very expensive items, back then it was tea because of the taxation tariff. If black people would have done that, do you think today we would call it the Boston Tea Party? I don't think at the time they would have would have supported it, but that's because they had very bad ideas about race and about. But black you understand people. my point, right? In the in the journey of history, do you think at some point we would have looked back at that situation? All we do is change the color of the skin of the people who did it. Do you think we would today call it the Boston Tea Party? I'd feel the same way about it. I'm sure some people Sir, wouldn't. I'm, I'm questioning. Your, I'm trying to give you the opportunity, dear brother, to not gaslight it. You know good and damn well that if black people would have done that, the narrative would have been different. My point is that narrative seems to change when it's either a black cause or a black supported cause. It doesn't mean that only black people support it. There were a lot of white, white people that supported the George Floyd um, cause. The murder of George Floyd was evident. A lot of white folks supported that. But that's still and, a But black who do you call. think's being victimized most by blocking traffic right now? When we see these viral videos of frustrated people who do can't you know get to how work, many, what's the it is of vastly black disproportionately people mm -hmm. of color and that's low income brother. people I, I don't who know are getting to their from. jobs and can't get to work. What if they get fired, Dr. Ritchie? Gotcha. Uh, what about a person well, of color who gets fired because he's late to work gotcha. because of the, one of these let protests? Me give you, I understand. Let me give you a number uh, because you keep going back to the traffic thing. What percentage? Of protest in America actually blocks traffic. I don't know. Less than one percent. Well, we're seeing it widespread right now in widespread, major cities. Huh? Yeah. Go yeah. to look how many bridges were just blocked in New York City just yeah. this week. How long were they blocked? Out until the people were arrested, and many of them there were released go. with the slap on the wrist, and they'll do it that's again. That's correct because it is a it's an ordinance violation, sir. That's why. And it should be something violation. more severe. You want it to be a felony? I don't know about a felony, but there should be some be? more serious consequences. Like what? Before. Tell us. You, you should go to jail. You want block a traffic? Go to jail. Go to jail. Maybe for, for a, a month. Jaywalking charge. It's not a jaywalking charge oh, if you block an ambulance. That's why it's an ordinance. No, blocking an ambulance intentionally is a different charge. Blocking emergency services has its own statutory. What do dynamic. you think happens when you block a bridge for hours? Well, it depends. If there's another way to get to the location that you're getting to, you reroute. They're blocking multiple what, bridges at once. And sir, what if they, it takes longer to go the other way? It's a matter of life and death to get to a really hospital believe, in time. 
No, I understand your point. I understand your point about traffic, but you really believe that the emphasis is in the less than 1% of formation of protest. That's the emphasis of the argument. And in my opinion, that's to dissuade from the reality of what protest should be. And once again, it's to make people uncomfortable. It's to provide an inconvenience. Uh, these things are not uh, these things are not pretty. They're not uh, roses and rainbows. Uh, this is real life. And when people are standing up for their rights or by proxy the rights of others, uh, it comes into this formation. There's a cause and effect relationship, Brad. If we do the right thing, if we do the right thing, we typically don't get this kind of result. We're trying to align this nation back to its higher self, if that even exists. And in doing so, when there's no political bridge, when there's no economic bridge, when there's no champion bridge, meaning a political leader willing to champion the values, the people themselves, they have to then block the bridge in order to get your attention. I give you the last And word. it's getting, I, I'll just tell you, what they're doing right now may be getting people's attention, and it's getting their attention to piss them off and make them less likely to support the, the ceasefire cause. I'll just guarantee you, watch yeah. the polls the next couple months, it will go down because of these protests, not up. If you want to support a cause, this is the worst way to do it. Yeah, I think it's very sad that somebody would abandon the principles of humanity and humanitarian ceasefires because they were inconvenienced getting to work. I do appreciate you being on the show, though. Thank you so much. Thank you.